sustainability cotton and global textiles so textiles have to be sustainable if you talk about sustainability people invariably think that uh, we are only going to talk about anything green 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 washing earth friendly of course that's important but for textiles to be sustainable there are three things in my view the industry should look at first and foremost are we economically sustainable we are not in business i think you are all uh, gathered in the uh, ahmedabad management association building so for the place is quite fitting and if you are going to sit and simply talk and listen story <coughs> it doesn't make any sense so action should be sustainable similarly the industry should be sustainable how you make the industry sustainable there are three aspects to it first and foremost the basic thing is the bottom line or the basement for any anybody to sustain is with the money uh kautilya chanakya in artha shastra says sukasya moolam dharma so if one has to be happy and one has to sleep well today i didn't sleep because na nirav gave me a difficult task of 2 o'clock in the morning so i was not sleeping so if one has to have good sukha good happiness he has to have peaceful life for that people have to follow some baseline some righteousness act but then the second thing what artha shastra says kautilya says the great chanakya says okay i know we want to live well so follow some principles that is dharma then the second thing is most important then he comes and connects dharmasya moolam vittaha if you have to have peace of mind or if you have to have dharma and you have to follow dharma then there need to be money to follow so see that in kautilya in artha shastra he clearly says sukasya moolam dharma ha dharmasya moolam artha artha mane vitta and i should not tell people of gujarati background how to make money as long as we make money in a righteous path and then spend it so we will have happiness so economic sustainability and the second thing is we have to have environmental sustainability so you would have heard here full about all acts of environmental sustainability and these two should lead to a employable sustainability so i am changing my process i am saying my technology i am sending half of my workforce home would that work it will not work so all three things have to work in some kind of a symbiotic relationship the economy should be sustainable then the product should be friendly because we have to take care of mother earth because um uh, earth is more important they say janani janma bhumischa swargat api ghariyasi so even compared with swarga if you believe in uh, swarga mother and motherland are much more important so you have to protect the motherland or in this way earth and then we have to protect workforce for a country of 1.4 billion population 140 crore population you bring a technology you bring something you bring new process that totally wipes up 50 30 to 50% of employment it's no good so all these have to work in some kind of a symbiotic relationship that is what we are going to see where is this if you have to get this imagine that sustainability is like a, the textile sector is a, like a stool a stool has three legs don't ask me why they make a stool with three legs that is the minimum optimum level if you are able to get a balance with minimum resources then do it so the table has four legs don't ask me ram why you, the stool has three legs that's what it is that's the root yeah that's the norm so imagine the textile industry is like a stool and the stool is normally balanced with the help of three legs so one leg is basically economy elections are fought elections are won based on economy so first and foremost one leg is economic leg and the second one because most of the countries are looking forward to have zero net zero anywhere from 2035 to 2070 bharat to 2070 pe hai so this next 30 40 years is going to be tough time 
and testing time for most of the countries. How do you achieve? You can achieve net zero by multiple ways and how do you achieve net zero? So that is environmental sustainability. Mananiya Pradhan Mantri to next 25 years ko amrit kaal karte hain. Isi liye, so the next 25 years there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges for the industry world over. So the second leg is the uh, environmental sustainability and the third leg is employable sustainability. So to do this, what the textile industry should do? So I'll give you some numbers, part of the press numbers, because the textile industry need to know. There are two regions I always tell very important, particularly for India, which is still dominated by cotton textiles. The region where you people are, down south a little bit, Saurashtra, and the region where I am. These are the two regions in the world that make or break the textile sector, which is predominantly dependent on cotton, particularly Indian textile sector. So. Where is the, what is the situation now? The situation now is we have to make sure there is demand and the demand is upticking. So this is the basic line. If you have to have an industry standing on three legs, what you should do? For next six months, you have to do something that will boost the demand. The demand will pick up. If the economic numbers are correct, econo economic numbers are just pro projections. People sit in their cushion chairs and then project. So by the end of the, by the beginning of the second quarter, that is maybe April, April, May, to, to economy will bounce back. So next six months is the time for us to see if we could bring these three legs into unison and play harmoni harmoniously with each other. Can you lift up the economy? Can you lift up the economy? If you lift up the economy, will the demand go up? So that is the baseline I'm going to discuss. And I will start now. So it's about 2.30 and I'll finish by 3 US time. So that will be 1.30 your time. So you have to bear with me. Now, how do you do that? First and foremost, people, we have been dep depending on export. That is really good. But we also have to focus on domestic consumption. So China. So we, we are at the vantage point. So we, fall, we can learn lessons from the West and also we can learn lessons from the East, whether in terms of high technology investment and high technology development, take it from Taiwan and take it from Korea. And if it has to be a broad scale value added manufacturing, take it from China. And if it is to be much more development service oriented, take it from Europe and the United States. So India is at a very good vantage point. And rightfully so, the uh, government of India is uh, looking forward to make India to be the leader of the South. Okay, I have written a recent column in the broadsheet paper. You may Google and find out more. For the pa in, in the interest of time, I'm going to go on fourth gear. So focus on domestic consumption. That should not be a problem in India because India's, India is the most populous country on earth and it is the fifth largest economy. Okay, but the only problem we do is if we do not have a balance between domestic consumption boost as well as export demand boost, now it's in the medium to short to medium term, it may be good. But down the road, look what's happening in China. Everybody were betting on China, but what is going on in China? That is the, uh, that is the alarming thing we need to know. China is the problem, kind of black sheep in this, in this mix. That is what bringing the textile sector down now because they were not focusing on multiple aspects of sustainability. Please don't understand that some sustainability means just simply green and environmentally friendly product and resources. That is only one aspect. Okay. So what is happening? China's economic growth is slowing. China right now is about 5.2% GDP. That is good. What we witnessed so far is bare minimum double digit growth in China. That is not happening. So currently China's growth is this year. IMF projects to be 5.2 and the problem is it's going down, uh, the, the trend is downward. Next year it is projected to be 4.5%. That is the reason we have to take notes from China. So, ano badra kratavo yantu viswataha krinvanto vishwamaryam. So, India me Bharat to itna, we are blessed that we have so much text. We have so much people, we have energy, we have good leadership. So what does the ancient text says? 
Trinvanto Vishwamaryam. Get information from all over the world as long as it does good. So that is what we, do, we have to do now. China, right now China's growth is 5.0. I am going to give you a lot of numbers because this presentation, I will share it with Nero because a lot of uh, information you may have for policy makers. I even interact with government people as, as well. So this will help even if you want to put a project and convince a backer, there are some information I have. I have 38 slides which I will be gladly happy to share with Nero. Okay. So China's growth is 5.2%. That is going to go down to 4.5%. Imagine for a country of 1.3 billion, if the growth is reduced by 0.7%, you can see the you can see the pivoting there. So what was the reason? China was focusing predominantly on export market. It did not concentrate much on the domestic market and domestic situation. That is the problem. It simply focused on export market for past 20 years and they were all jumping in joy that they were able to boost manufacturing. China's growth was going in double digit, but then comes the halt. When the global economy is going to have a growth of only 3%, the next year prediction for global growth is only 3%. It is again coming from 3.5 to 3%. Where was it? Just two years back in 2021, when we were coming out of COVID, the global growth was about 6.3%. Right. And then China was, because China was basically exporting, predominantly exporting in 2021, China's GDP growth compared to 2020 was 8.9%. Imagine from 8, once the export market shrinks, if they have no balance to domestic market from 8.9% in two years, it has suddenly fallen, falling down to 4.5. 50% cut in China. That is the reality. That is the reason textile industries are not doing well. So you, uh, Gujarat produced about 96 lakh bales of cotton. So there is a demand and in terms of supply, the cotton is on a tight supply. Then why is the industry not picking up? Why people are saying that there may be a chance that the MSP may kick in in early November? So the government increased it about from 6,000 rupees to 7,020. If my memory serves correctly, numbers would be mostly correct. But if and there may be slight variation, so pardon me for that. So 7,020 rupees, farmers are comfortable with it. So the farmers are getting about 10,000 rupees. 10,000 rupees for kapas. That is going down. Now they are having about 8,000 rupees and in next year, month or two, in 45 days, they are expecting that it may come to close to the level of MSP. Even now, the first arrival in Gujarat, people are expecting that it will be more or less on par with the MSP 7. That is, one thing we are failing to accept is demand is not there. Globally, there is no demand for textiles and that will not pick up. Sometimes the medicine, sometimes chemotherapy is hard, but we have to swallow. We have to go through it. So the demand right now for next six months is not there. Okay. So you have to balance that by domestic consumption. How do you balance by domestic consumption? By without affecting the employment as well as not harming the environment. That is what I said. We have to look into the conundrum and use an example, analogy of a stool with three legs. So economy, economy right now is not doing good. Why is it not doing good? This is the situation. Can you believe? This is the latest issue, not latest, June issue of consumer reports. You all see this. I, I, I believe seeing is believing. We need numbers. Industry need number to run. But at the same time, you, have, you need story to tell and story to sell. Two things. Numbers are needed to live. People have to know how much I'm earning, how much I'm spending. At the same time, people have to also listen to good stories to sell and survive. Numbers are needed to, needed to live and good stories are needed to sell. But at the same time, we have to be very watchful. Stories without number is just a spin. We will spin and we will fall down. Ito chakkar ayega. After chakkar ke baat, what happens? We faint. So understand this. Numbers are needed. And we also have to have confidence in the system. In other words, stories have to be there. We have to market based on numbers. Marketing without solid number is a spin. And you can only spin for some time. After then, you will fall down. So what is the reality? For next six months, 
This is the cover story of consumer reports. Most people in America look at it. What should I buy? Which appliance should buy? What do I do? They say, this is the French thing. So this is what the thing is. It says, people, hey, people save. Hey, Manush, you don't spend. Karcha nai karo. Save, save, save. And then how do they save? This is alarming. The most rich nation on the world says, you can even save by arranging your kitchen and arranging your fridge. If you, if you arrange things in the fridge so that you don't forget and keep on buying, so save. So what is the situation? We are going to talk about economic sustainability, part one. The US economy is uncertain. As you saw yesterday, it had never happened in the United States Congress history that they removed, they vacated a speaker. The own party, the Republican Party, few people of the Republican Party themselves joined with Democrats and booted down the speaker. So, economy is not stable. When United States economy is not stable, you can see the repercussions in the world. What is going to happen? United States is going to have only 1% growth. Can you believe right now? The growth is 1.8% in 2023. 2024, US growth is going to be only 1%. On top of it, these things are affecting the US economy. When US economy affects, Canadian economy affects. When Canadian economy affects, the North American economy will affect. That will have, that will have repercussions in Europe too. And then the ongoing war in Eastern Europe. All this you take into account. United States economy is uncertain. On top of it, people are expecting there will be some interest rate hikes in the next next uh, when the Fed uh, meets next time because the inflation has not been brought under the control to reach the benchmark level of two percent. So all this then on top of it, auto workers are striking. Even President Biden has joined the auto workers strike. Can you believe? So that is the middle class. Auto workers are highly paid union workers in United States. So they are the middle class. So middle class are very important for textiles. And then, because of the ongoing war and Russian aggression and things like that, there's so much volatility in oil price. America runs on two things. America runs on gas and houses. People build big houses. I didn't build. But others build big houses and they stay away from their workplace. So it runs on houses and it runs on cars. So both things are having a hit here. Mortgage rate, 30-year fixed mortgage is about 6%. It was around 3% for before COVID. It was around 25 to 3%. Now it has raised to 6% double. So there is no discretionary income in people's pocket to spend. So budget is uncertain. Auto worker strikers is going on. Oil fluctuation is there. Inflation is still lingering. And the housing crisis in terms of the in terms of fixed rate, 30-year fixed rate is not even at 3% where people will be able to buy houses. Only when people buy houses, people are going to buy your home textiles. Okay, so all these have to be taken into consideration. Economy. Economy is not doing well and we hope that things will improve by the second quarter or at least at the beginning of the third quarter. That is six to eight months. We have to do belly tightening tightening in the textile sector globally no more expansion okay that's one mantra so where are we then on top of it indian sector is heavily dependent on cotton cotton is very good but cotton is a natural fiber so it has its own restrictions and barriers weather 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 this year it's fine gujarat so it's only first arrival is only coming now in saurashtra so what is the arrival now the arrival should be around uh, 1,000 bales, 5,000 quintals, but it doesn't even reach, at the peak level, it reaches about 20 to 30,000 bales. So there's a long way to go. Uh, thank God the rains are sufficient, but delayed. So the arrivals are coming slowly. So cotton means, cotton will have its, will always have a place in the equation, textile equation, but there are a lot of challenges in the cotton, which the industry has to go through. Because it is basically a natural fiber dependent on mother nature. And on top of it, the moisture issue, the contamination issue, all these are inherent, inherent challenges. I don't call it as a barrier. These are all inherent challenges we have to overcome. So cotton is still there. But how do you enhance the value of the cotton sector? So this slide gives you, particularly in United States, people favor cotton. 
so we could export. Then he said, okay, United States and Europe people only favor cotton. 89% of people feel that they feel it comfortable. It's all there. Then why can't I export? So I keep on putting about how many textile mills are there in Gujarat, right? So how many ginning mills are there in Gujarat? About ginning factory, 650, right? Some, some, something of that order. 650 and 100 spinning mills, right? Then they should all jump in joy. So after this Pitru Paksha, every farmer has to come and dump it in the yard and off, off you go. That's not going to happen because United States economy is down. So six months have to watch. So there's no point in farmer hoarding, hoarding it for six months. They are hoarding even last year's crop. That's a different story, but that, that will not happen. Okay, last slide, watch, suspense. What would be the prediction of the cotton price? And what price will be sustainable? I began with sustainable and then I'll end the presentation with sustainable. So all this will happen on many factors. Many factors will influence. So life is not as easy as you think. Life is complicated, but you have to live. Lord Krishna says, Uddharet Atman Atmanam Atmanam Avasadiyet Atmaiva Atmano Banduhu Atmaiva Ripuhu Atmanaha. So you don't have to sleep and uh, be a crybaby. You have to force yourself, get up and do something. So that's what we are trying to do. And I think this, the, your, your conference uh, put together by uh, uh, Dr. Rai and Neera would, uh, would, uh, would have made you a little bit much more uh, informed, well informed. And I, I, it's pity that I could not join. Otherwise, I would have liked to learn more. So now we know that economy is not doing well. Next six months, it's basically touch and go. Then what is going to happen in cotton? So cotton is basically a natural fiber and the textile industry is dependent totally on this basic economic principle, demand and supply. Now the demand is not there for textile, supply is there. I'm not saying we are going to have a shortfall. Of course, last year we had 330 lakh bale from India. This year it's more or less equal, 325 lakh bale with dampened demand. So that should be sufficient enough. So supply is there. Whereas the demand is not there. So we have to watch for demand. Weather. So far, although rains have been delayed, but rains are not bad. Okay. So and uh, you also have Nar Saurashtra predominantly is irrigated. So you don't have to worry. Even though the arrival is delayed by about 15 to uh, 20 days, it's fine. So two regions to watch for cotton. One I said about Saurashtra. I don't have to explain to you about the Saurashtra, but you, the place where I'm sitting, Labak, this is in the high plains of Texas. That's the world's largest cotton producing patch. What happens in Texas will affect the global textile sector. That is an important thing to take care. And economy, I told you about economy, it is slow. Then geopolitics, God save us. So I thought things will settle down. Things are not settling. It started with Europe, European war. Then it went with some kind of diplomatic row between two nations. Now the political situation is uncertain in United States. So the gift arts keeps on giving. That is politics. Then what do you do? Then the thing which is under our control is how you manage your price, how you manage your cost, and how you are able to offer the price to help with demand uptake. That is somewhat in the hands of the textile sector. Okay. So what is the situation now? The total production for this year, for this marketing year 2023-2024, these are the latest numbers from USDA. The total global production will be about 112, 112 million bales. Of course, US bales 480 pounds each. And the domestic use the total use basically, United States will be having 13 million bales, India 25 million bales, China 27 million bales, as Brazil 13 million bales, Australia 5.4 million bales. And out of 13 million bales, roughly about 10.5 to 11 million bales produced in United States will have to be exported. So basically 95% of cotton crop grown in United States, most of the cotton, 99% of cotton grown in the world's largest co producing patch where I am sitting has to be exported. So out of the 13 million bales, 11 million, less than, slightly less than 11 million bales have to be exported. That's a mini survey we did uh, two weeks back. If 11 million bales of cotton has to be exported, some countries have to produce. And, what, and when the countries will produce, the countries will only produce when there is a demand. 
Okay, then most of the cotton goes to China. Then it goes to Russia, then it goes to Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia. Now, China is not doing well. China's domestic market is not doing well. Why it's not doing well? It has an housing crisis. People have built houses like anything. Unemployment is high. When unemployment is high, people are not buying new houses. So they are not having discretionary money to buy. So then what happens? The Chinese yarns have to be dumped somewhere. That is the problem where spinning mills in Gujarat and elsewhere are facing problem in India because lot of imports from China coming because China has to keep its factory, factory running. There is no domestic intake. So they dump it somewhere. So that is the situation. So again, economy, economy, economy. Now where we are, I am in Texas, the bottommost state. That's a flat land. It's semi-arid land, so it is only suitable for cotton. Then why, why they only plant cotton? Because there's no else crop can go. We have drought and we have a we have a rain fed. It's basically we don't have waterways. We depend on rain, but of course agronomy helps. We have one of the best seeds in the world. They are drought drought tolerant. All these are there. Okay, that's a different story. That's why we are planting cotton. There's nothing else we can grow. We cannot grow rice, we cannot grow wheat, very little. And the rest is rotation crops or sorghum and even corn will be difficult, milo, sorghum. So the land has to be tilled and grown, sometimes it's no till. But the land has to be utilized, then the ultimate crop is basically cotton. Texas runs because of cotton, oil and cattle. So that is the thing and in fact Texas size is larger than the size of France. Can you imagine? This state is bigger than, in terms of land mass, it is bigger than size of France. Used to be mostly into oil, that oil wells are drying. But cotton has to be planted because the, uh, the situation is such, you cannot plant any other crop. Rice cannot be planted, rice is heavily dependent on water, you know. So that is what it is. So they have to do something, that's what they do. Now this is the information you will never find. How do I have a control on this side? What do I do? How do I plan my supply? How do I plan my stocking of cotton? You have to look into Gujarat's uh, production. Of course, that you people will know better than me. Second, you should know what is happening in the United States. United States crop here is not like India. In India, you plant everywhere. Now the carif Carif sowing would have been finished by June. Now the first arrival is coming and somewhere in the after December, after January, March, somewhere some uh, in South people will be planting cotton. But that's not the situation in United States. They only plant once a year. The planting happens in May and the harvest comes in late October. That's all. May to October is the time frame to watch 2023 crop. What is the 2023 crop? If you look at it, it's drought. The United States basically planted 9.9 .9 million acres of cotton. That is lot. Each farmer on an average will have 1,000 acres. Unlike one hectare, two hectare in India, a farmer will have at least 500 to 1,000 acres and the maximum land they have is about 10,000 acres. That's the beauty. You can see the end of the world, huge farms. So roughly 10 million acres. Out of 10 million acres, 6 million acres came from Texas. Imagine, 60%. Out of that 6 million acres, 50% comes from the area where I am sitting. This is the Mecca. This is the Dwaraka for cotton in the world. 25% of the whole United States cotton is coming from the region 100 square miles from where I am sitting. Okay, so that is what you have to watch. So, so this is the area like what, then how do you do? These are the numbers, he gave me five minutes, but I have told you. So how do you do? You do, do not do any expansion. Do modernization. With the existing fiber, increase your product basket. So if you are having 60s, try to do 260s. If you are able to have 60s, go up to 130s. You may have to change the blend. Okay, go, if, if possibility there, I, th I think the uh, interest rate is about 8 to 9 percent depending upon your credit level. So, try to go for modernization, improve your comber, add for compact spindles and so on and so forth. Create new products. So, one new product I am going to show you is, I will do a quick demo and then stop. 
So this is basically a cotton. All we know is cotton is used to make undergarment. Cotton is used to make denim. It's all fine. The second thing is sustainability. Look for products that can go to help people in medical area, in environmental area, in protection area. So one thing is, this is simply a coarse cotton. You can see the cotton with a lot of bark. And this is assumed that this is a river, Swach, Swach Pani. Assume that this is a, like an armada, clean armada. And one day, somebody spill oil into it. Okay, assume that somebody is spilling oil into it. This is cotton, value addition, that is what I am going to do. So now assume that there is a Swach, swach Ganga me, or Swach Narmada me, Swach Tapi, Tapti me, oil bardia. Oil, oil was spilled into that, or even PFAS and all kind of chemicals are flowing now. Okay, assume that there is some toxic chemical. People so far have been using only polyester, uh, polypropylene and synthetics to remove this oil. But this is cotton, no treatment done. You don't even have to clean the cotton. If your processing machine can do, if your card line can do. And I am using that to soak up the oil. This cotton, normally bleached cotton will sink. But this cotton, because of the presence of bark, it will not sink. I am doing mechanical agitation, but still it is not sinking. It will instantaneously take up the oil. Oil is removed and it will not take a single drop of water. You can see I didn't do any magic, no chemical added, it's clean. So try to improve, what did I say, economic sustainability, I told you, watch out for the demand. Environmental sustainability, use greener process and greener chemicals and not only that, try to find applications where cotton and textiles can be used. And the third one is employable sustainability, how do you do? When you create, now people will say, I'm going to modernize, when I'm going to modernize, my productivity will increase, my productivity increases. Obviously, employability may be an issue. No. Try to improve your applications. Try to improve your product basket. But this may take time. That's what I say. The next 25 years, there are a lot of opportunities, there are a lot of challenges. When there are challenges, there are opportunities for us to grow. So, I write a lot of these columns and I will try to share this. Moving forward, good data. I told you, data is needed for the market. And you also have to sing good song. Song, you cannot sell without data. And simply singing and selling without data is a spin. So focus on increasing the productivity. The product, you, there are only uh, 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 finite amount of land available all over for cultivation of cash crops. Cotton is a cash crop. So you have to look for yield increase and also focus on quality enhancement. Where will the market be? I told you I'll finish by uh, three, my time. Four minutes left, I'll finish. Where will the market land? So this may be some positive news. Already farmers will not get hurt because the government has gladly fixed up the MSP to 7,020. Okay. So, of course, they may expect 10,000 rupees, but 7,020 is a good sum. So, we have to congratulate and thank the government that they increased by 2,000 rupees. Good. So, MSP is at 7,020. Right now, Sankar 6 is around what? 6,500, 6,700, varies here and there. Imagine that the, mark, that the demand is not picking up until the second quarter. Now, the arrival is 1,000 bales. By November, it will be about 20,000 bales. And probably by February, uh, January, February, of course, by uh, January, December, January, it may go up to 30,000. And last year, the arrivals were there surprisingly up to May. So if that's the case, arrivals will be steady. Right now, the weather is good. So the arrivals are steady. Quality is not bad. So the arrivals will steadily pick up. 
If that's the case, and if the estimated target is reached for 325 lakh bales, now the market is around 6, 61,700. Demand is not going to pick up for six months, so arrivals are steady. In Indian setup, the value, the production is going to be more or less same like last year. Gujarat is about 96 lakh bales, give or take 5%, it will be still there. Unless otherwise the demand picks up, which six months have to watch, the market will settle at lower 60,000. So that will be beneficial for all because for me, if it goes below 60,000, MSP will automatically kick in. So that's, that's taken care. So the market will settle at about maybe 60,500. See, I'm not, a, I'm not a Rishi to say, but this is just based on my calculate. What did I say? Numbers are needed. I don't sing, I don't tell story without number. So I've shown you the number. So the market will be about around 61,000, 60,500. Of course, with MSP kicking in, arrivals are good. And hopefully, if the demand picks up in the early third quarter or end of second quarter, where people are hoping and expecting, when the inflation comes to about 2%, when the geopolitical situation gets some kind of attraction, hopefully next six months, next six months, hold your belly tight. Do not do any expansion. Try little modernization. Pay attention on stocking. Maybe three to four weeks stock. Maybe two weeks stock. Then three to four weeks stock. Cotton will be coming steadily. So that's not an issue. So let's hope and wish that the demand picks up. Cotton arrival is there. So with that, I just want to end. Uh, so I also write columns. If anybody is interested, you Google me and find the email and write to me. I'll be happy to send you my columns. With that, I just want to thank the United States cotton growers and particularly to Ms. Cara Bishop who gave these first-hand information. These, these will, will be very hard to come by. And my collaborations and again thanks to Dr. Roy and all the team for putting up the show. Bye. Hello? Okay. Thank you.